Welcome to the ADF Insight Essential Series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration, you will see how you can undo a user table selection in case of a validation error. My name is Frank Nymphius and I'm from the Oracle ADF and JDeveloper product management team. The use case in this example is pretty simple. The idea is that in an editable table, users can change data but they are only allowed to change the row currency of the table if they committed the previous changes. If the user tries to change the row setting before committing a change, then an alert should be shown that informs the user about the requirement for commit and then the system should reset or restore the previously selected table row. The table properties on an ADI faces table that we need for that is the row selection, the selection listener property and the selected row keys property. The row selection should be set to single as this use case makes sense in a single table selection case. Of course the example that I give in this session can also be used in a multi-row selection case but it makes more sense in a single selection case. The selection listener of the table actually makes sure that the selected table row in the ADF faces table is synchronized with the ADF binding layer. If that listener wasn't there, then the ADF binding layer and the table would soon be out of sync. The selected row key, that is the property pointing to a object that holds the current selected table row. This is updated by the ADF faces table. Manipulating this property programmatically would allow you to set the current selected row to any other row. So the key to the solution for the use case introduced in the beginning is to define your custom selection listener, basically decoupling the ADF faces table selection behavior from setting the current row on the binding layer. This way it will allow you to intercept the user selection, verify that the validation is okay, whatever you need to perform there, and then if the validation is okay, continue by synchronizing the ADF binding layer with a new row selection or just restoring the previous row selection and just informing the user about the change. So what a custom selection listener needs to do is it needs to read the previous selected row state, it needs to get access to the binding layer so it can synchronize the binding layer with the table selection, it needs to get access to the controller context so that we can get the transaction state of the current transaction from the task flow we're in. That could be an unbounded task flow or a bounded task flow. If there are no uncommitted data, then the selection listener will synchronize with the ADF binding layer so that the table selection state is the same as the current row on the binding layer. The sample I will show you uh, that explains how the solution is implemented is simple, as I mentioned before. But what you learn in this session is how to override the default selection listener in a table, how you can determine the transaction state from the ADF controller context, how you can undo a row selection, and how you synchronize in Java the ADF faces table selection with the ADF binding layer. And of course you learn a lot about how to use the ADF framework internally from Java. What you see here is an ADF faces table that is bound to ADF. Users that want to change the row currency do this in the table by simply clicking into one of the editable fields. And as you can see, I can go wherever I want. When I edit this table cell here, just adding some characters, and now I want to step out here. What happens now is that the row currency attempts to change and with the change invokes the selection listener that we talked about on the slides. This selection listener now will perform the validation that is required and if the validation fails it shows the alert, in this case informing me that the data that I have changed needs to be committed before I can select a new table row and at the same time it sets the row selection state back to the previous selected row. So when I commit the change, now you see I can continue selecting any row I want. As soon as I perform another change, 
you see that the alert comes up again because I have uncommitted data changes in here. So let's see how this is implemented in the ADF source code. The starting point for my demo is this empty page. I do have a panel collection in it and a commit button prepared and the commit button references the operation that is exposed in the data control palette. To create a table I simply drag and drop the collection into the panel collection and I choose table ADF table. In the table configuration dialog I select single row selection because that is what I need to change the row selection and OK the dialog. Now this table comes with a set of properties as I showed in the slide already so the row selection is set to single and then when we drill down to the behavior category then we find the selection listener defined in here. So the selection listener that we have defined points to bindings, departments view, collection model, make a current. This is the default behavior that ADF configures for the table selection listener. Now what happens is that whenever at runtime you select a new table row, the binding layer, the page definition file at design time or the binding container at runtime is referenced for the ID of the tree binding that populates the table with data. And this tree binding has a collection model reference and this collection model reference has a method called make current. And what it does is it takes the current row key set, so the selected row key set, and passes this on to the binding layer for the binding layer to synchronize its current row with the selection of the table. What we need to do to intercept this selection is to use a managed bean and to handle the selection listener case ourselves. So we take out the listener and then we choose the edit option and what we can do is we can create a new managed bean and then have the new managed bean generated with a method to handle the listener. For the purpose of this demo I already pre-created a bean it's called my table page bean and that has a method called on table select. So configuring my table with this new managed bean or this existing managed bean in my case will now whenever the table row currency changes inform the managed bean method about the change. So let's have a look at the managed bean. So what the managed bean does First of all, it receives a selection event. This selection event is passed in from the ADF faces table. And we can use this event object to get access to the removed row set. Now the removed row set is nothing else than the information about which rows have been deselected. And we keep this row set state or this row keys just in case we need to restore the old state, which we need to do if you attempt to navigate off a current selected row with uncommitted data. From the selection event as well, we get access to the rich table. So calling get source and casting the source to the rich table gives us a handle to the table instance from which in the next step we can get access to the collection model. And the collection model now gives us access to the ADF binding layer. So in three steps, accessing the table, accessing the collection model, accessing the binding layer, we get from a click on the table to the binding configuration. And we use that information in the case of a successful validation. So if no uncommitted data exists, then what we do is we take that binding reference and set the current row to match with a new selected table row in the ADF faces table. But before we can do that, we have to check about the transaction state. So this is what we do here. The controller context is a static class that comes with the ADF controller. And as we might have an isolated transaction in the bounded task flow, we cannot blindly go to the application module, but instead have to consult the controller context for the information about whether or not the transaction is dirty. So we access the 
current root viewport in this case, but we can also access the current viewport. So the current view root viewport works in this case because I only have a browser page. But if you wanted to have a generic code, for instance, you would just use the current viewport. Now that could be the browser window if you're executing your logic in an unbounded task flow, or that could be a region if it's in a bounded task flow. So both code would work. In this case, as this is on an unbounded task flow, the root viewport works as well. So in case if the transaction is dirty, that means I have not committed data changes, I compose a message, and this is the Java server faces message that I compose, simply informing the user about the problem that I see, that they have to commit the change before navigating off the row state. In the next step, what I do is I set selected row keys. Remember the slide where I said that selected row keys property of the table keeps track of which of the rows needs to be shown as selected. Now what I'm doing here is I just pass in the old row key, the rows that we abandoned in doing a new selection. I pass this back into the selected row key, so setting back the selected row key. And all I do here is I then refresh the table using a partial refresh. What you see what I'm not doing is I'm not synchronizing the ADF binding layer. And the reason I'm not doing this is because there's no need. The ADF binding layer still thinks that the previous selected row is the current row. And for that reason, because I'm undoing my table row selection change, I don't have to do anything here. In the case where I don't have uncommitted data changes, I would need to now tell the binding layer about the row selection change. So this is what I do in this else clause here. So I get access to the table row binding. And the table row binding, I can get access from the table, selected row data. That's the node binding. And then I get access to the iterator binding. And the iterator binding basically is the reference in the binding layer, whereas the table row binding, that's on the client side. That's the current object, the table row object that I have. From this table row object, I get the table row, which is the current row that the user selected. And then on the iterator, now on the data binding here, we call get row set iterator. And then we set the current row on the binding layer. So what these four lines of code are doing, they are getting the current row object from the ADF faces table and pass these as the current row on the binding layer. More information about Oracle IDF and Oracle JDeveloper is provided on the JDeveloper homepage. Point your browser to oracle.com slash technology slash jdev and there you find the software downloads, tutorials, entries to the discussion forum where you can ask your questions and have experts answering them. You find samples, the developer guides and many more information that are useful for you building Oracle IDF applications.